I know you mentioned about how there were certain things in Israel and Palestine, certain mistakes that were made. Just give us one one major mistake that you can elaborate on in terms of that led mm -hmm. to some problems. Just to give people a concrete example. Okay. Now, there are perhaps one of the mistakes was perhaps not negotiating with the with the Zionists early on. The now I know there are many people who believe that the all of Palestine has the, the Zionists have to put, have to be pushed out of Palestine completely. All of Israel was now the state of Israel. They have to be pushed out completely. But before it got to this point, there was a point where they could have negotiated. And they could have perhaps let allow the Zionists to have a certain por portion and the Muslims or Arabs have another portion. That was one, but the Arab nations refused to negotiate. And when they did that, they decided to go to war and they wound up losing that war and lost everything. That could have been one point. Another point was, even though no one could have predicted this, was before that the Ottoman Empire probably shouldn't have gone to war in the first place. <laughs> That's one thing they mm. should have done. Shouldn't have gone to war to and should not have joined World War One in the first place. Mm. And that once they did that, they lost the area of Palestine to the British and the British were able to do whatever they wanted to do with it. The British, once the British got control of it, the British government was definitely pro-Zionist. They had a lot of Zionists in there in the government. The the Prime Minister at the time, Chairman George, something or another. I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, George he was, Balfour or something, was it? Lloyd George, that's what it was. Lloyd yeah. George. His a foreign secretary was the guy who wrote the, the document that basically connected Britain with the promise of creating an independent Jewish state in the Middle East. So once that happened, once the British took over, they were able to do whatever they wanted to do with it. And, but if the Ottoman Empire had never gotten into that war in the first place, it would not have happened like, it would not have happened like this. So those are two things that perhaps could have, that would have changed definitely the trajectory of the world had they not happened. The negotiation part is a little more, is a little more difficult because there is, if there's a point in time when the, right around the end, close to the end of World War II, before the British, now throughout this period between the World War I and World War II, there was fighting going on within Palestine between the Zionist immigrants from Europe and the local Muslims, who were mostly Arabs, but not all of them were Arabs per se, who were mostly, who were fighting over land, resources, rights, and everything else. The British control is called Man Mandatory Palestine. So it was part of the British basic colonial empire, basically. But the British tended to favor the Zionists more than the Arabs, without any doubt. But the British tried to put forward the idea that they were trying to be even-handed with everybody. It didn't quite work. But still, I will say the British were, were at least put across the image that they're trying to be fair. Nonetheless, there was a time after World War II ended, the United Nations was built up. And there was a time where there could have been a way to negotiate a settlement between the two groups where the Palestinians may have had a little, may have had more control and more power than what they have, than what they wound up getting, which is absolutely nothing pretty much. And I know there are many people who believe that they shouldn't have been there, period. They should have been gone. All the Jews and should have been pushed out of Palestine, period. I, mm. I understand that. And that's the way we can think that many people think right now. But the fact is that they were already there. The only way to push them out would have been through genocide, basically. It would have been almost difficult, impossible to push them out right then without going to war, which is what they did, and they wound up losing. Mm -hmm. Also, the war, the 1948 war, was not done for Islamic reasons. It was done for nationalist ethnic reasons. It was, there was not a, I don't think there was any concept of this is a war to save Muslims at all. It was a war to save Arabs, to save Arab Palestine. And that mentality changed everything because now, mm -hmm. It's a totally different thing. You have the, the Zionists who are already there. By then, many of them have been there for generations now. For them, they're fighting for their lives. Whereas the Arab armies of six or seven nations who sent armies to fight in the 1948 war, they were fighting for, for really for ego. There's really not much to it. Mm. They, they weren't fighting for Islamic reasons. Certainly they were not. They weren't mm. fighting for any really noble reason. They're fighting to save Arab dignity and... Mm. That was a completely, that was not the right reason to fight from a Islamic perspective. And they lost anyway. When you have a situation where the Zionists are fighting for their lives and they would have been fighting for their lives and you have the Arabs, they were Muslim, but they weren't fighting for Islamic reasons. What's going to happen? People are fighting for their lives, wanting to fight harder. Whereas the outside people, the Arabs coming from different countries, are, why are we killing ourselves for this other land that's not even ours? Let's go back home. And that's what, that is what wound up happening. 
So that's a deeper story. And people might think that the West helped Israel. And that's not exactly what happened. The West did not help Israel. Actually, in that 1948 war, they didn't really help Israel all that much. I know people think now, yes, Israel gets a lot of help from the West. But 1948, it wasn't so clear. Israel mm -hmm. was just the Israelis, they weren't, it wasn't really Israel yet, but the Israelis at that time were just more organized. They had a more concrete reason to fight. They were fighting for their lives. And for them, they had more, they had much more to lose if they lost. Whereas the Muslims did not have as much to lose. Mm -hmm. Except for the Palestinians, of course, they lost everything. But that's because mm -hmm. the people they depended on weren't fighting for a solid cause, a good reason. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.